Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, aka Dark Logos, and this is the show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Oh man, it's been a rough weekend. Uh, went to a rock tournament. I'm looking at my nice blue rock hat now, wishing I still had my black rock hat that said Top 16, because this one just says Rock 2015. But with that being said, I earned myself a hat. Uh, this past weekend uh, playing uh, the also awesome uh, Super Scroll Engineer Airplane yes I did say it, Airplane and Bizarro Tech uh, to everybody's uh, chagrin it actually uh, it, it wasn't bad uh, of course because I got in second place there's lots of flexibility and I went against a lot of interesting tech uh, but the main thing that I sort of learned was the 10 years of experience of knowing play this do this do these other things came into a grand effect uh with engineer m uh, super scroll the one thing i will say uh sort of leading into today's topic is i didn't spend i spent too much time thinking offensively about super scroll not enough time thinking defensively about super scroll all right, so uh, today, uh, what we're going to look into is amping up to the next level of play, and what does that mean? What does that look like? Things, more common pitfalls that I've become more aware of uh, in the last week, um, and so uh, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at from start of team building to the end of the, t the tournament. Okay, so we're going to go through the whole entire process. So this by far is probably going to be uh, a quintessential show. So you probably want to bookmark this one, share it with your friends. Um, going into con season, this is definitely one that you want to have in mind. All right, uh, starting from the beginning, you need to determine... Uh, what type of player you are, your shenanigans, defense, uh, aggro, then assess is, does the meta work for your style of play? If so, how much, if not, how much right now we're in a heavy shenanigan, uh, meta, uh, with aggro elements, not so much defense. Okay. So keep that in mind. So if you're going to say, I'm going to wait a very strong defensive option. What is it? What does that look like? If you're going to say, I'm going to um, go on a pure out shenanigans control uh, type of team, what does your damage output look like? If you're going full aggro, what happens if, you know, all of a sudden you're hit with minus one all stats? Because that can't happen. So you, you're keeping all of these different things in mind so that uh, you're able to just sort of come back have a comprehensive uh, view of where the meta is at. Not what your team is going to do, but just where the meta is at. And then determine if you run certain risks, are there rewards? Okay. Now, some people will take it a step by a step further and say, all right, where are the main aggro options? Why? What are the main defensive options? Why? Where are the main shenanigans options? Why? Why are people running these things? Why are people not running these other things? Are these what we're considering B and C tier characters worth looking at if they counter, you know, an obscure, you know, character that could, you know, wreck your entire team? OK, so you, you have to start weighing those things. A lot of people would say, hey, Dark Logos, don't I start with team building? No. You never start with team building. You always start with theory crafting. Always, always, always start with theory crafting. From theory crafting and then assessment comes team building. But you always theory craft first. And then you also, and this is my school of thought, okay? This, this isn't really anything else that you're going to hear from other major podcasts is this. You, once you determine what type of player you are, and how flexible you are, you build for you. You build for you. You don't build for the meta, purely for the meta. 
Okay, you build for what focuses your best skills onto that board. Okay, and and the main reason I say this is that a lot of people will cookie cutter what they saw at a rock. They will cookie cutter what they saw at Gen Con or some other major tournament and then say, this is the metas. Blah. This is the best stuff. Blah. There's no need to think. I just play this like Daniel Joins did, like George Masu did, like Patrick Yapko did, like Alex Avila did, like, you know, this other guy did, and then I'm going to be awesome. No, that's really not the case. There are people that are just blindly able to play teams, but the main problem comes in is that as they're blindly able to play, they have a loss of nuance. There's a loss of nuance, and not only is there a loss of nuance, most of the time their ability to analyze their opponent's team in depth uh, is quite evident. The The biggest flaw of the net decker in hero clicks is this. They do not under, they understand why stuff works, and they understand what things do, but they do not understand the multiplicity of how stuff works and why it does what it does. Okay. And, and that's really what separates high level players from people that are mid level players or just about high level players. And I can say that, you know, being just about a high level player, the, the other thing that you have to sort of remove from your mind is, Oh my gosh, they're playing the cheese. Just just kick those people in, in the proverbial throat in your mind. There, there is no place for that. Uh, for me, I had to deal with that uh, to an extent when I played Super Scroll this weekend. Go back to, you know, last year, right before Gen Con show, talking about Super Scroll. Uh, I, I, I went in on the set analysis of Guardians of the Galaxy, and I said purely that Super Scroll by far is probably one of the most broken characters in the game. Go back and listen to it. So it's not something new where I'm like, oh my God, Super Scroll is winning. I think I might need to to build a Super Scroll team. No, I've been on this. But at the same time, because other people have picked up, yeah, this dude is sort of strong. Then there's this commentary of like, oh, well, Dark Logos, I thought you were an excellent team builder and Lo and behold, I see you with the same stuff that everyone else has. You know, that airplane stuff was pretty cute, but it wasn't created as creative as your Gen Con team as last year. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, you need, to, you need to keep pulling that sort of stuff out. Now, no, go back to what I said way at the beginning. What type of meta is this? What type of player are you? Okay, so what I, I said... You know, last year, oh, well, this, this the meta is very range based. What screws with that? Hand TA and League of Assassins. How can I get that? Do, 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 do. And after you know, trials, tribulations, much prayer, and and burnt offerings, I finally came up with my team. Okay, so there's sometimes it it is that difficult if you are if you're going against a high depth pool. Uh, if, if you really think about it, for Gen Con, your pool is really about 90 to 100 people broken down into the top 32 of those. So all of a sudden, you, you have to think of it like this. You go from a super huge tournament where you're going against the possibility of 100 different team combinations. Then the best of those team combinations are in the top 32. And each and then if you go into top 16, you are in a pressure cooker equivalent of a rock of a, of a normal top 16. OK. That that is that really, really says something. That you're you're no longer going against a, a team that was uh, that lost, uh, let's say, of uh, you know on day one maybe one game. You might be going against a team that's been undefeated the entire tournament. So your your level of of pressure, skill, quality goes up. So you can start to understand why people you know start to navigate to 
what do, where is the meta going and what can I play in the meta that's viable that gives me the most amount of options so that I can win. OK, and no tactics. Being able to pick a power is really awesome. If you think about all the elements that resources do, resources are no different than pick a power, except you do it during force construction instead of during doing it during the game. And you pay a lot less on the resource power wise than you do on having a character that has pick a power. All right. So. Now that we're establishing where the meta's at and then what we need to play uh, or the type of style that we need to play, then we, we start making our lists and then we list out viable figures that are at the top of how we play, but also viable for the meta. So let's, for example, uh, say I am looking at Black Bolt. Let's say Black Bolt is meta. He does some awesome stuff, you know ultra liquidation ho okay so that's that's his power ultra liquidation ho black bolt can use pulse wave um he has improved targeting ignores uh walls so you can he can just pulse wave you behind tons of walls and ranks so if you come close to try to engage his team he just blows up your entire team you're just like boom when, when black bolt does a double power action you do his printed damage okay so bam all right, so we have Black Bolt, and we're like, yeah, this is how I play. Black Bolt is 150 points. His base damage is three, so he's not ridiculous, um, but he has like 11 attack. All right, so I'm going to build around him. Um, what else do I need to deal with my other options that are in the game? Well, I can't running shot with this ultra you know, pulse waves. This is a double power action, but I need to make sure that he doesn't push when he takes... Uh, does his pulse wave so i need to get something on him that grants him willpower so you start calculating up okay what resources grant willpower or what um what entities or whatever else grants willpower then you take a step back and say hmm okay out of all my options which handles the most amount of matchups or most amount of figures that i'm looking at now, this is this is wave one. This isn't even your close to your final team. This is just first trial one. It's like, OK, well, I like this. Boom. Put that on there. And then you start building around them. And so you have your your four figures and then you you play test. And then you find out, you know, ultra power. Ho, while great, requires you to have map, because if you don't have map, your opponent picks an open map and then you are hosed. So now what? What do you do? Realistically, what do you do? And this is the part where a lot of people break down because they're just like, well, <laughs> Ultra Power Ho is dumb because I have to have map so that I can win it. Um, so I'm going to just, you know, throw away Black Bolt. Well, no. I could say, well, let's see. Let's change up how I'm doing ultra power ho let's 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 look at that and then let's look at what our resources are able to do so that I'm able to reassess what's optimal and what's practical okay in most games and and this is where in team building a lot of good players uh fall down and, and make decisions that aren't wise, but they look good and they play well, but they aren't wise. OK, so you'll you'll see team design like this. And, and I played this first round and this is not an insult to the guy. I just don't think it was a wise team build. Played Kyle Rayner with the wall and bullseye now. I know it's set up so like, oh, I see High Father, I carry Bullseye, blah, 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 packs broken, ha, 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 plus I have Prob and I have Perplex. I have the core powers I need. That's good. You handle High Father, but you don't handle anything else real well. Oh, I have walls. Well, what happens when you get put on the Pacific Ocean map? I'll change constructs. Okay, that's going to cost you a turn. So all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wait, I, 
this isn't what I thought it was going to be. You see? And these are the type of engages that a lot of people just don't spend the time uh, to, to think about. Okay. They'll, they'll, they'll spend the time to say like, Oh, look, I covered for this weakness of the guy or this one matchup that I really hated, but they didn't really look at the bigger picture and saying like, ah, okay. I need the prob. I need another attacker. Well, what happens if I use rocket raccoon who's tiny and then I have some other guy that's able to, to do some other little power. So then bam, I have three attackers I still have prob, I still have perplex, and I still have this other guy doing whatever he's doing. I'm able to still pick them all up. I'm still able to operate if I'm on a water map because I get these other bonuses. And then I just need to conduct my tempo like such. Boom, boom, boom. I do this, then I do that, then I do this other thing. Okay. So if if you sort of look back, where does where does this breakdown happen? I face the match in play testing that I am super afraid of because this is the one silver bullet that hoses my figure that I want to play because I believe that this figure is the most brokenest figure in all of Heroclix, which there's very few figures like that that don't get nerfed to high heaven. Then I'm going to play Prob's character that does insane damage so that I too can make sure that I'm going to hit. It's too simple. There, there's not enough depth put in there and there's not enough play testing put in there because again if you know okay swarm teams are in the meta you have two attacks if you miss one of those attacks what happens if you'd fail to kill a character with both of your attacks what happens what happens when you have uh, stealth and you only have a low damage uh, on bullseye uh, targeting a stealth character what then so there's there's some there's some elements so let's rewind back a little bit so we're going back to team building so we've got our preliminary team we see like okay these are the problems these are the problems these are the problems then you make a decision okay and you always make this decision and, and a lot of people don't like it when I present it this way because it impacts a lot. And definitely this year, it impacts it more than it did before. Do I roll theme so that I can get the effects of map control and theme prop? Those two things must be essential, even more so the map than the theme prop, mainly the map. And theme prob and ATAs. Sorry, those three things. Are those three things worth it in exchange for something that's more optimally min max with popular use characters in the game? And a lot of people would say, well, I'm more limited on the theme team than I am on the min max. And I would say, no, you're not. You're more limited. You're you're limited in both. And here's why. In min-max, due to your points, you're looking purely for power stat combinations. There are some effects that are useful, but they're not, when you look at just purely powers and stats, which is where most min-maxers stop at, uh, then you start realizing, oh, I can't run this one character even though it has this cool power because it's 20 more points more expensive than this other character. And with the 20 points that I have left, I can shove in, I can upgrade this and turn that into this other thing. And then you, you, they'll play around with it. And it's like, all right, I'm able to shove in a more upgraded version of this, get one more construct in there or one more ring in there, get this pog here and bam, I had a lot more than I had before. Okay. Now that one little power might actually help them against the one pure thing that utterly hoses them, which they would have and again in a tournament. You have like a one in 100 chance of fighting. If, if we're talking about Gen Con, if we're talking about a rock, it's in a one in 32 to 40. OK, or if you're in California, one to 56 chance. But that doesn't eliminate the chance of that figure existing or coming up. So 
that is that's your first main problem okay is that people when they're going min max they they will go purely off of stats and numbers and sometimes look at matchups and then say okay i know this is a one and a hundred chance but i'm still going to have this other figure in because it does these other things very few at times that this happens and these and the ones that actually do that are a lot of your higher level players uh and then you'll look at them you're like well why did he get eighth place at at there it's like well think about it man yeah he may have had a bad matchup but he's eighth place at at gen con or eighth place at origins or eighth place at nationals and he's constantly like if you have a guy that's like constantly in top 16 top 32 you you really take time to think about that and you're like oh this is a team doesn't make sense because there's nuance in there that you just have to like dig down and get uh, the power choices might be for something that happened in playtesting that you will never know about. So just looking at teams, and trust me, I've been looking just at teams for longer than the show existed. Sometimes you can get a lot out of it. Sometimes you're just like, I don't get it until you talk to the person. And then you'll PM the person or interview the person. They'll be like, yeah, in playtesting, such and such figure did this. And every time such and such figure did this, my team died. And then you're just sitting back and it's like, well, how would they know that that one power completely kills your team? Most people don't. I found it during play testing. So I had to make these adjustments. So, okay. So once you have your, your team established and you've got it built, then you have to establish the tempo of the team. The tempo of the team, I, I've talked about tempo partially last show and I've done it in other co- podcasts in, in depth. So you can dig through the archive um, and try to find uh, a show on tempo. But the main thing that you're trying to establish with tempo is this. You are establishing a pace of offense defense and pressure and and then one more thing is zone of control offense defense pressure zone of control okay so let's break it down offense how many times am i attacking in a turn how much damage output can i generate in a turn at max if they have no damage reduction what is my max damage output if they have invincible what is my max damage output those are the two extremes that you have to look at if every click i'm hitting on is invincible if every click that i'm hitting on is naked what is the max damage output i have in a turn and that changes things a lot because you can see teams that can do 10 and 12 damage in a turn if it's all naked all of a sudden only be able to do four if invincible's around okay that like i said it is a huge game changer uh so take that into effect next thing is when when i am down how vulnerable am i can i push can i not push okay with my defensive positioning okay does does if i'm on the map what do I need to have on the map? What do I not need to have on the map? What type of spacing do I need to have between my opponent and myself? These are these are key elements. If my opponent comes in on me, do I want that? If my opponent is far away and runs, can I handle that? Those are these are key things people do not think about until it happens. How much space can I cover? How much swing do I have? Uh, swing again being uh, your range uh, plus your movement uh, for an attack and then you can add in plus tk and stat mods okay so add in plus tk and stat mods so all of those things together you're you're thinking about that in your placement next thing is uh, is your pressure and being mindful of your pressure. If I move into a certain spot, do I just tell my opponent you're coming in on me or it, that's it? It's over. If if you decide to go into another spot and says, hey, I'm here, 
if you fail to <clears throat> if you fail to act next turn I'm going to kill one of your figures so if you're not in a position to come at me or push and willingly push I'm going to annihilate you you are making your opponent feel internally uncomfortable due to what you have due to your placement that is the biggest thing about pressure is is a lot of times people just don't realize like okay i need to make my opponent feel like 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 they don't want to be playing the game now some would say well that's bullying no it's not bullying i'm not saying you know you're the worst hero clicks player in the world you suck and I actually had that happen uh, when I was at Gen Con while I was playing a game. One of the uh, players that won't go named, uh, he's a good player. And it was the second time of me playing him. And one of his friends came up. He's like, yeah, you're losing guy. Man, you suck. And I just told, my, told the guy's friend, I'm like, yo, you need to get out of here. He's playing an excellent game of Hero Clicks. I don't need you insulting my opponent right now. Go away. Okay, bullying and all that other stuff is not necessary, but making it so that it's intense the entire time is fully legitimate. It's fully legitimate. Okay, so the the other thing is is that with your your area of control, I think I've talked about this like over almost two years ago. Is where am I rallying to on the map? If I move up and I I fight, I know where I'm going to go to put pressure on him. I I know where I want him to go in the map so I can finish him off. I know where he's most likely going to go to try to think he has the most best, the, the best defensive position, but he actually doesn't because I've already solved for that. Then I'm going to, if I'm on the back end and things aren't going well, I can stage by stage collapse back towards my starting area to allow myself time to regroup. Okay. Or, or to another part of the map so that I can regroup. You always need to know where you're rallying to. You also need to know where your offense is pushing towards. The problems that happen in games, while game, why games start to feel sloppy, or you start to wonder, like, how did this turn out this way, is that when you looked at the map, even if it's a brand new map and you're told to play on it, you have no clue where you're rallying, you have no clue how you're approaching, you have no clue of of how your opponent is is approaching so if your opponent definitely picked map they know how they're approaching it's up to you to determine how are you going to approach just take two minutes look at the map analyze the map decide your starting area and then determine like okay i can rally here go there attack and put pressure here the way his team is designed hopefully i think he's going to move in there that means that i have to put pressure on that area if I fail to put pressure on that area, he's going to win the game pretty easily. So, so once you establish that, then the game, then the game starts to turn. The game turns into uh, you being in the driver's seat more so than you being in a, a rough position. Okay. All right. So, those are those are the main things. So we're we've we've established, you know, okay, I've got this team map. I've got uh sorry, I've got the map, I can understand where I'm going, I understand my tempo, I understand my pressure, I understand how this is going to affect the timings of the game, uh that I need to, you know, deploy out at this time. I need it's gonna take me two to three turns to get to here, or it might take me one turn, and then I need to make sure from that point on I'm able to hold off my opponent. So once once we've established all of that then we're able to say okay i've got my map i've got my team i've i've play tested um well i'm 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 play testing or play testing or play tested or play testing the other part of play testing that i, I i've brought up in the past is like hey you go through you play a game see how the team goes then more importantly you write what the team did well what the team did poorly and then you go and you play that that team again against the same or a different matchup and then you do the following you allow for 
like free props, which I, I mean like this. You start you'll you start writing down like the odds of hitting. Like I need a, I have a seven attack on a, a eighteen. I'm like that's yeah I need an eleven. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to depend on that. But if I'm rolling elevens all day with that character, I can't depend on that in a tournament. So I have to start factoring in like this is not real. But if I have a, a character with a thirteen attack and I'm missing a fifteen constantly, then yeah, just say like all right. Boom, just just for reality's sake, reroll, hit, okay, boom, I do damage. Okay, or you just purely establish, like, all right, this part in the game, we'll just take notes of where all the clicks are at. We're going to come back to it. We're going to play it out. Then we're going to come back to this moment. I'm going to make this one change, and then we're going to play it out again. That type of play testing allows for you to just like, ah, okay, I got it. I see what the problem is. I see where I'm going wrong at. I see this other thing. I see that thing. And a lot of your write-ups by your your best team players, your best teams in Heroclix aren't going to ever explain playtesting. They're, they're just not. Um, and the main reason is, for a lot of them, the, the proof is in the playtesting, and the playtesting method is just the same way that a factory refines sugar. There's multiple ways to refine sugar, but there's some ways that are better. Uh, I'm just telling you the generals. Okay. Uh, I know some teams play in-house tournaments. Some teams have elaborate math proofs that they put all figures through. And, you know, then they're able to calculate up the best cost per click characters in the game and then make mad scientist stuff that doesn't make sense but is insanely powerful i I mean there's there's tons and tons and tons of ways that people play test i do not recommend play testing purely through theory crafting i do not recommend that there that's that's it sounds good but that's where a lot of people fall short okay so you go through your play test and you establish tweak, play test some more, establish tweak, play test some more, tempo, all the other good jazz, boom. You've got it. You're on your way to the tournament. Do not, do not, and I repeat, do not bring three teams. I know a lot of folks will be like, well, I won. I won the tournament. I made the team the night before. No, 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 no. Okay. Those guys, those guys are going to become fewer and far between the people that say, oh, I saw I saw a super scroll. So I just knew I had to bring out my white witch tech. I just had to bring it out. You know, no, no, you didn't. You didn't practice your white witch tech. You didn't pa- practice the five other teams that you brought because you're paranoid. Don't do that. OK, I, I have to Bam. Okay. And the main reason is this. And and I'm I'm going to break it down in terms of time so that you understand how stupid this is. Okay? You build team 1. And let's say team 1 is the actual team that you would be playing. Okay? You play test team 1. There's two weeks before the tournament. You spend all your time playtesting Team 1. Team 1 is your team. Okay? How much time have you put in? Two weeks. Let's say now you have Team 1 and Team 2. You spend one week testing Team 2 and one week testing Team 1. How much time did you put in to Team 1? One week. One week. So what's what's already happened? Our experience is cut in half. Our knowledge base is cut in half. Our our overall understanding of the game is cut in half. Okay, third team. You spend part of the first week working on team one, part of the of the end of the of the first week into the beginning of the first week of the second week with team two, and then the finally end part of of the second week you have team three. How much time did you put on to team three? Three and a half days, maybe four. Okay? You see where I'm going? Even, and and it becomes worse because if you said, I spent a whole week on team one and I spent 
four days on team two. And then all of a sudden team three, which I ran, I, I spent three days. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You, you have to finalize. You have to finalize a lot quicker. You, you, if you look at that, that meta and you're like, oh, oh, they have my matchup. There's a guy sitting over there that has the one thing that would screw my team so bad. Oh, I see that one figure over there that I just don't want to face. Oh, it's cowardice. And, And we all face it, but it's cowardice. There has to be a confidence that you have bringing in your team. If you don't have that, then you shouldn't have built that team in the first place. Okay? If you're like, oh, oh, I see eight Kyle Rainers. Oh, oh, I, I didn't play test Kyle Rainers. Now that's your fault. That's your fault. You didn't you didn't you didn't go back to the beginning, all the way at the beginning, saying, What is at in the meta? What is at the top of the meta? Okay, you failed to do the basics. That's on you. You you zip past all that because you thought you were better. Because trust me, I ha- I've had students I've worked with that that do this. They're like, I you know, I didn't think about it. I just thought I I didn't have to go through that, and I just start there. I'm like, no, everyone starts at the process from the beginning. Everyone. I start this process at the beginning every time. Okay, every time. Um. Uh, so you're at the tournament. First things first. When when does the tournament start? Is there registration? Is there pre-registration? If there is pre-registration, always take it. If pre-registration is full, don't freak out. Just show up for normal registration. Okay, but be there as soon as normal registration starts. Don't be the guy. It's five minutes until the tournament starts and goes to registration. Don't be that guy. Okay, you're you're asking just for knots in your stomach and added stress. Okay, the next thing that we're going I'm going to have you do is establish where you're sitting at outside of the tournament area or wherever and just chill. If it's just talking, if it's listening to your music, if it's relaxing, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of people vape. I'm not really a fan of that, but I know some folks vape. You know, do that. Relax. Okay. Um, The main reason is this. If you spend all your time like, oh, he has that. Oh, he has that. This is over there. That thing's there. Oh, my gosh. You will cloud your mind with a lot of possibilities that you may not face and you've already started your stress level. Okay, now some people might say, well, Dark Logos, why is that an issue of me starting my stress level at that point in time? Well, let's break it down. Okay, let's say you're not me. Let's say you're the hyperish chill dude in in the world. If the pre-registration starts at nine or early registration starts at nine and people are being silly, the guys that build their team at the event, those are the losers. Just being honest, those are the losers. Nine times out of 10, those are the losers. Don't worry about them. If they're like, well, you know, I, I think this figure is really good. I'm going to put him there. And uh, what do you think, Jim? Do you think that this composition of copycat banshee black hand and you know lydia mallor is great and then and then you know the other guy is going to be like yes you solve all the meta problems he doesn't have any dang prob but yeah you solve all the meta problems doesn't have any perplex but yeah he solves all the meta problems okay don't worry about that guy and and you know go back rewind have some dang courage if I, I'm going to say it again, rewind, have some dang courage, because if that guy's building a team right in front of everybody at a rock, at Origins, at Gen Con, what's it, how much playtesting has he put in? Zero. How many hours of prep does he have at max two? How much hours of prep have you put in? Two weeks minimum. Who is at a better advantage? You. If you get paranoid, 
How much time are you going to forfeit due to some idiot building his team at the last minute? Two weeks and all that play testing and talk and other people's time. So, yeah, don't be a fool. Okay. So you start, you're the most chill guy. You have your stress levels. Let's say we're going on a scale of one to 100. You're looking at the other people's team. It, it, it puts you at a 10. You're like, eh, I don't care, but let me look on AC Realms and see what those figures do. Okay, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do this. Now, your brain has already started. Okay, it's nine. And you're doing this on and off between nine and 11. Let's say in that whole period of time, you go to a 10. Okay, first round. You play your first round. It's, it's a tough battle. You rise up to a 20. You have 10 minutes off. You're, you're able to knock it down to an 18. Okay, going to your second round. Really tough match. Goes up from an 18, adds 20 points to a 38. Okay, so you're you're really stressed. Match ends quickly, though. So you have 20 minutes to relax. So you're able to go down to a 35. Okay, third round starts. Again, you're 2-0. and oh. You go have a tough match. Because this guy's two and oh two, add twenty more points of stress. So now you're at fifty five. Okay, you try to come down, but you're still thinking about that last game, and you're only able to knock maybe one or two points of stress. So now you're at a fifty four. Okay, now your your four rounds are, are done, and then in bigger tournaments you're going to be going a fifth round. So boom, you're in your fifth round and you're at a 55, sorry, 54. This guy is also undefeated. The odd numbers may make it so that four ones may not advance. So you have to win a guarantee to go in. Knowing that ups your your stress level uh, by 10 more. So now you're 64 in the middle of the match. You win, but it's a it's a really strong match and it added 25 points of stress onto you. Now you're an 89. Now five five rounds, you know, at a major national tournament, you're going to be waiting till the next day to play again. So you have all night, the rest of the day to sort of relax. Okay, to try to bring your super chill self back down to zero okay here's the truth of the matter the average human starts their stress level at 50 the average stress level starts their every average, average human starts their stress level at 50 just how we are we were as a species we weren't always on the top of the food train the food chain and so it's still in our dna to be paranoid and be aware of dangers and and other stuff like that the and just average life did you did the car start the car's not starting where's my keys man i need to get breakfast i'm hungry i don't have enough water man it's hot in here man it's cold in here all these things add stress where's my bag where's my cards Oh my gosh, where's my figures? Who has my figures? Jim, do you have my figures? Billy, I'm going to slap you. You took my tackle box, you bastard. I thought I lost my figures. Does this sound familiar to you? Yeah, I, I, I see it all the time. Okay, I see this all the time. All right, so these little stupid little things just tick, 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 up your stress so fast that you're not even aware of it. You don't even have time to respond, okay? And see, like a guy like me, I'm super analytical. My stress starts at like 55, 60. And I'm going through round and round and rounds of tournaments. Now, let's say you're at a rock. You're not at nationals. Guess what? Which one's worse for your stress level? The rock, local super Q, or nationals? The rock is a lot more stressful. And here's why. Okay? If you go to nationals, it's your prerogative if you do teams. Okay? It's your prerogative if you do teams. Because then you have four or five rounds of, of singles. Then you have four or five rounds of teams. Then you go home. 
and go go to sleep and then come back and do the same thing the next day. <laughs> That's on you, man. That's on you. But uh, at a rock, you're going to go, depending on the numbers, four preliminary rounds. So you have, depending on the numbers too, uh, three one might not break if you had a lot of people. So like in my case with Tulsa, a three one wasn't guaranteed to break. So I need, I knew I needed to make BA four O. So automatically, that's like a little bit of stress, just just sitting there, okay. And then round one, Kyle Rayner, hate you, Kyle Rayner. Boom, kill Kyle Rayner. All right. So I do the following. I I try to get all my hellos. What's up? You you thinking? What are you thinking? Blah blah blah. How you doing? How's the wife and kids? I get all that stuff done during registration time. Tournament starts. Hit the in between rounds. Hit the headphones on. I I'm out. Like I text my family and my friends. I let them know what's going on. I get my encouragement from them, and it lowers my stress about ten to twenty points. I listen to music while I'm playing. That is very relaxing. Lowers it, it. It it makes sure that my stress doesn't go up 20 points per game, but at max that it goes up 10. OK, and 15 if the opponent is really good and I'm in a really tense situation. OK, so. I'm, I'm making sure that my stress level is maintained in between rounds. I'm making sure that I'm dropping my stress as much as possible. So. Here's the other part about stress. Even if I I'm, I I hit a 50 and at the best part of the tournament I'm able to lower it down to like a 45 accelerated heart rate your chest will still be sore. It happens on off on off on off on off on off. You're going to be sore after 6 rounds. It weighs on you. The effects of stress weighs on you. You don't drink enough water that weighs on you. You're you're thinking about, you know, is your wife out there messing with your car that weighs on you? All this stupid stuff that goes on in life, it weighs on you. And then you start forgetting small things. And small things turn into medium things and medium things turn into big things and big things turn into losses. You don't see clearly. There's other things that happen that's that will add stress onto you during the match. Zombie mechanic 4-1 is the most freaking weirdest, dumbest, but awesomest mechanic that WizKids has invented. Because the point scoring could put you ahead. Or puts you behind, even if you've mowed down most of your opponent's team. If they, if you mow down your opponent's team, plus zombified them, then your opponent kills everyone you've zombified, plus kill other f- figures on your team. Even though technically you are winning in pieces on the map, in points you are losing. And so, if someone, if you hear the judge say ten minutes. And your opponent is up 40 points and there's a 70 figure, 70 point figure piece on the map and there's a hundred point figure on the map. You're, you're blanking which one to go to. Which one do I kill? Who, who can I kill with Super Scroll or Electro or Doc Ock or Magneto? Who can I kill? Can I get it? Can I do it? Blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh. Oh, the clock's running out. Oh man. Um, hmm. Uh, charge, uh, flirt, flirt. No, wait. I can't do charge flurry. Um, sidestep. I got, no, wait. I need charge. Hold up. Wait. Well, what if I have hypersonic speed? No, he has impervious. So I need exploit weakness. So I need charge. Okay. Is there an object around? Sort of, but I can barely make it. Uh, but I know if I get the object, I'll do enough damage. Uh, well, if, if he hits me, oh, okay. But I need willpower so I don't take pushing damage. But I, I, I know I need invincible because if I miss, then he's going to hit me back. I, uh, uh, but will, will scrolls keep be enough? I could pick shape change, but no. Wait, psychic blast. Running shot, psychic blast, perplex. Oh, wait, do I have enough base damage? Uh, yeah, that happens. That happens a lot. It happens to the best of players. 
And I'm not just saying zombie super scroll. I'm just telling you straight up watching it firsthand. You might not see like the grand, you know, showmanship that I'm sort of displaying in my acting, but I kid you not, that same level of stress, that same level of feeling is going on in their head. And it's crazy. It's crazy. All over again. So think about this. In the Rock this weekend, I went undefeated four rounds, made it to the final rounds. So I went through top 16, top eight, top four. So that's three more rounds on top of everything. So I'm dealing with the eighth round. I played eight rounds of hero clicks with gradual stress buildup. What's going to happen? So again, these are things that no one's going to tell you in, in a post on, on HC realms. And this isn't a slight on any of the, the signed teams, but they're not. No one's going to tell you the importance of drinking water. No one's going to tell you that's a really good idea. If you're going to do high level play to have cardio in your exercise routine so that you can have your heart in a good position. Um, I think I, I told you all this last year when I was at Gen Con. I can't do hypeness anymore. If I do hypeness, my heart races so much. It's sore for a day. Due to the stress, it's sore for a day. Uh, and I actually think last year when I lost to Goku in the Tulsa Rock at top 16, it was probably an act of God that it that it happened that way and, and was grace because if I, I was tired, I was exhausted and I didn't even watch top eight, top four in the finals because I was stressed and that downtime gave me time to relax and just say, this doesn't matter now. I can, I can chill because if my, my stress level had already hit that 80, so you might say, well, you know, Dark Logos, I'm not African-American, nor do I have a history of heart problems. Doesn't matter. Stress hits you in a different way. You can have an aneurysm. You can have uh, intestinal problems. Uh, you can have uh, kidney problems. You can have circulation problems. You can have all sorts of weird problems due to stress. And so you start to see why I've said everything I've said up to now. Everything from your assessing the meta, going through, figuring out what works with your personality so you're not fighting that internal freaking HC Realms nerd poster in your head saying, oh my gosh, he's not my world champion. He's not my best player that I know. He's he's playing cheese. He played Super Scroll. He played Kyle. He played Bullseye. He played Nightcrawler. He played Metron. He played Blizz. He played that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to play the little troll. I can't win. So I make fun of people who do because I have to feel competent due to my own incompetencies. Man, man, man. And that's really where a lot of it comes out of. So that they can't win their way. So they want to make you feel small. You have to fight that dude. That's why I really don't read the realms that much anymore. I read the stuff for the quarry. Skim some stuff in tactics. I leave general discussion alone. And then I go look at previews. That's it. Otherwise realms is pointless. Oh and units sometimes. But other than that realms is pointless. The community is toxic. It's not worth it. You know. And even if you listen to what I did with the quarry. I'm like yo if you're positive And you leave positive comments. I'll shout you out. If you're do negative comments. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm just going to freaking slash ignore. And, and guess what? It's reasonable conversation. I actually get positive feedback. People don't troll me. Okay. But I, I've established I'm going to be positive to you. You be positive to me. But you have to be confident. You have to have confidence. You have to have confidence. You have to have confidence. Because if you don't, it's just going to add another one to five to ten points of stress on every round. Okay, so the, the tournament's over. You know, you made whatever place you made. 
Okay. First thing you do, put all your freaking clicks up. If you want to, if you can relax playing battle royales, go play battle royales. Um, if you're like F clicks, I'm done. Then F clicks, you're done. Sit, just put your stuff up, take a nap, relax, you know, uh, go get a drink of water, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate people. That's you, you be surprised that little sweat that you think is nothing over five rounds of stress. You're losing tons of water, drink water. Don't drink Coke. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't drink caffeine. Caffeine is the worst thing for you to drink. Caffeine is a dehydrant. It is shrieking your brain. Um, But also there's like another little study out that says uh, the dye that they use in dark pops causes cancer. And if you drink over equivalency of like two and a half pops per day. Uh, cans of pop per day they pretty much say you have over a 50 percent chance of catching some of getting some type of cancer so that's that's another incentive for you it's like ml mel4 or something like that mel4 uh anyway so uh don't don't do that drink water you can go out and get your dang burgers and and whatnot but try to get like a sprite or something you know or uh not not a tea uh, get, you know, something like a, a high C or something, something that doesn't have caffeine. OK, and then even though you get stuff that's like a bunch of sugar, don't get super sugar crunk. Make sure you're mellow, because the worst thing you want to have happen is your body wants to jump around and you have to sit still. It's dumb. It's dumb. And you know why I say that? I've done that. I've done that, man. I'm saying from personal experience, okay? It's not like, yeah, I just saw this young kid. He ate like five donuts, tried to play around a hero clicks, couldn't remember what probability control and pulse wave was, and he just got wrecked, man. And then he just like, you know, slammed the table, ran around the room five times, and then he just fell down because he ran out of energy. You know, it's not even that. I saw this firsthand with myself. Everything I'm saying, to some extent or the other, I have done myself. Sleep. Go get some rest, sleep, take a nap, relax, just chill. And then when it's all over and, you know, prizes and awards are being handed out, be grateful that you got where you got. Look at the whole tournament as a learning experience, whether you got first place or second place or you're, you know, barely made top 16 or whatever. Okay. Next thing, go, you know, connect, talk to people, say, hey, you know, you mind if I pick your brain here and there? So that you have, again, Heroclix buddies from, you know, another venue. Okay. And then as you're going home, debrief with your friends. Say like, yeah, I encountered this. I never saw this before. What's your thoughts on this? Then they'll be like, man, that's crazy. Or no, this counters it. Wait, why didn't you do this? Or, oh, okay. I have to think on that. Uh, Don't expect all the answers to come that day. And then just go home and sleep. Don't talk about, you know, if you're if you go and talk to your families and significant others, just just go and just let them know like, hey, cool. I did this. It was fun. And they'll ask, you know, you can tell your interesting story and then just let it go and then relax and and, and sleep. If you're driving back home, try to rotate drivers as best you can. And, and enjoy the whole process. OK, if you're going to the cons, usually whiz kids let's like one day be like not world championship day so go enjoy the con as best as you can but usually the last day the con freaking closes at noon and stuff like that because it sucks <sighs> it sucks so hard but i mean those are those are things for you to think about okay i mean i'm not your daddy I'm not here to parent you and say it's my way or the highway or you're not going to be the next world champion. But people don't talk about this. They, they, They don't put all of this out there for you to know. And it's not the secret team Illuminati, you know, you know, keeping people in the dark about proper health and, you know, the ramifications of stress and, you know, poor play testing. It's just it's not a thought. It's just not a thought. The next level. That's going on right now that will never be documented by most people is the physiological factors of hero clicks 
and its complexity on the human body and how that affects tournament play. Period. The meta part is not the is is probably like forty percent of it now. It's about forty percent. Sixty percent is physiological and psychological. It really is. I I can't tell you how many games that I already had an edge the moment I sat down just for the pure fact I played Super Scroll and my opponent was like, crap, Super Scroll. I didn't have people on tilt, but I did automatically ratchet up their stress at least five points. All right. So this is today's show. Um, I know some people might find this a bit preachy, but, eh, you know, that's what you get when you listen to a theologian. Uh, Give your feedback below Um, any uh, additional like, yeah, think about this, man, or think about that. You know, all this other stuff. Put that below. I definitely want to hear your feedback on that. Um, I do think. I, I, I do think overall. Hero clicks players don't want to admit the one thing that is slowly coming, and that is high level play is dominated by team thought and team mechanics. But since team thought, and I'm talking about like almost like esports level teams, but the main elements that also come with that, you also have to have managerial elements as well. And once you start having those managerial elements, then you're going to start seeing consistent winners. Okay, consistent winners. And that's the part. That's the part that people don't want to hear. That's the part that seems like, oh, that's unfair. That's the part that's like, oh, well, this is just a game. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Doesn't guarantee that you're going to get first place by having a manager or team leaders. But buddy, buddy, if you have somebody out there that helps you lower your stress level between rounds by 10 points and the other guy doesn't, and you're at 55 and he's at 70, you've sat down at the table before figures are revealed with a huge advantage. All right, you can uh, follow me on Twitter. It came from, uh, at, uh, <laughs> I'm about to jack this up. I got too intense. You can follow me on Twitter at Start Over Pod. It came from outer space and told me, man, aren't you glad that work uh, gave you a, a day off after your day off? <laughs> uh, you can fan, find my random musings. You can find out when the new shows up. You can also hit The subscribe button helps me boost my rankings in YouTube and some directional place to my voice is the subscribe button. Uh, Also, uh, you can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, Uh, keep it interesting. You don't have to keep it piffy this week. Keep it interesting. Um, Let me know if I'm taking a little bit too far in the analysis or this is very timely. Uh, I really, after this weekend, I just, I just sat back and thought at my final round and then, and I'm going to give you real brief, my final round against Goku, pretty much he ran Batman, uh, the, from the new Batman, sorry, the new Batman from Trinity War at 85 points, Despotellus, Bat Cycle, Yandu, Mantis, Weasel, yeah, Weasel, uh, I ran Super Scroll, Engineer, Airplane, Bizarro. Uh, he positioned up out the gate. Uh, he dealt four or five damage onto Super Scroll, knocked him back. I regened all but one of it back, so I was like on click two. He repositioned again, um, tried to get some more shots on Super Scroll. I rolled scrolls, went up, killed his bat cycle, uh, zombified his bat cycle, had the bat cycle pull me out uh, away 
back towards Engineer. I asked him if Despotels was coming with me. Uh, Despotels did come with me. Despotels poisoned the bike, killed the bike, jumped over towards uh, the airplane. Uh, same turn, he killed Bizarro. Um, so I'm like, uh, there goes you know a good chunk of my offense. Super Scroll was like pushed. Then I have Super Scroll pick uh, Earthbound because people don't think about that. Um, Earthbound, uh, Perplex, Invincible. Uh, then have Engineer Sidestep. She picks Hypersonic Speed, Precision Strike, Prob, Perplex up, uh, Engineer's Attack, Hypersonic Speed over, Miss First Attack, got the second attack, killed Despotelis. Then uh, the next turn, he uh, kills my airplane. Uh, engineers push, you know, Super Scrolls trying to clear. So Super Scroll Scroll clears. He runs down, kills freaking, um, kills Engineer. And it is Super Scroll versus his entire team. Just about. Minus the bike and minus Despotellus. So I hype, I pick hypersonic speed, precision strike, prob, invincible, kill Yandu. I should have brought Yandu back, um, but I didn't bring Yandu back because Batman was right there. And I thought Batman would kill Yandu, but Yandu could have rolled for regen. And I still had my prob, so I could have really healed back up. And then he would have had super senses. So... That was a mistake, so I just let Yandu stay dead. Uh, we um, Batman had to clear because he pushed. Then I picked sidestep. I had poison and invincible, and and I side. I think prob or something. I forgot. Sidestep up, poison. Uh, Batman in uh, weasel. So like I'm capped at like food tokens. Puts weasel on freaking pulse wave. For some reason, he gets Batman out the way. Pulse waves with Weasel. I mit, he misses. I'm like, whoo. And because I think at that stage, I'm like near my last click after some damage I've taken or whatever. Um, just because I, I kept missing my scroll rolls and I was pushing. Um, and anyway, so uh, he gets Batman away. I pick sidestep poison and I had like still energy I was on the last click with super scroll and I sidestep in poison Batman use close combat expert um, roll dice comes off fall, fall off one of the dice falls off the table has six on the table roll again dice fall off the table had a six on the table roll a third time um, missed probed then hit Got probed by Mantis. Miss. So I didn't get my steel energy off. Roll scrolls. Die. That was game. My mistake was I should have rezzed Yondu. I should have, instead of going after Batman, since Batman didn't have access to Pulse Wave, I should have just killed Weasel. And in all honesty, I just needed to sit. But at the other end, I had 10 minutes left and I was down points. So I had to kill Batman. How I did it was not good. I needed to be in a position where I healed up. So I should have picked willpower, except the fact that, you know, I wasn't going to take pushing damage. And then knowing like, okay, boom, um, I can just go ahead, kill Weasel, still energy up. I'm going to be fine. And if I, if I'm not fine, I'm going to be on my last click, try to force him uh, to come after me with the mind controller to turn me into, to give me a bunch of extra powers. But I can think about that once that stealth, that, sorry, that stress haze is lifted. So anyway, like I said, you can email me at starting over podcast at gmail.com. Uh, also you can follow, you can donate to the show, um, on the blog, uh, starting over podcast.blogspot.com. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, the buy list for Trinity War is on there, so just FYI. Okay, thank you all for listening. I know it's been a long show, um, but I definitely think uh, this is 
This is definitely an answer to an age-old question that was asked to me two years ago. How do I get ready for Origin and Gen Con? This is your show. So it took me a while and a lot of life experience, but here's to you, sir. All right. Thank you for listening. And remember, man, we all got to start over sometime.